On today's show, I bring you solar panels being installed on rooftops right now in Australia with sticky tape. Yeah. I bring you a truckload, I said truck, of information about Tesla's recent announcements. And I jump into the whole EV shenanigans that goes on in Australia right now in the political space. G'day, my name's Chris, and this is your show on everything that's happening like in Australia and well sometimes around the world on our progress towards like cleaner, greener future of renewable technologies. For my returning subscribers, seriously, thanks so much for your support. It's really encouraging. Look at all these awesome comments, keep them coming. If you're new, welcome. Now, for those who watch the channel frequently, you'll know that like last week, I didn't post a video and well, that's because there wasn't a heck of a lot going on. You see, there was some solar stuff, yeah, and there was some maybe other stuff, yeah, but they were just actually announcements. There was no actual substance behind them. So I'll, I'll promise you this, if there's nothing of substance, uh, I'm not going to post a video, okay? So whilst I find my groove and get the things going on this channel, stick with me and well, let's jump into it, hey? Now, this may sound crazy, but could you imagine sticking your solar PV down with sticky tape? Sounds crazy, right? Well, turns out no. On the 15th of April, Arena announced $975,000 of funding to SolarPod. Now, SolarPod, not SolarPod, SolarPod. And they're going to actually do um, solar PV installations for businesses and maybe government agencies that can't actually permanently install onto their rooftops. And they're gonna be using industrial glue. Now, these systems are the 12 uh, to two um, PV panels, up to like 4.25 kilowatts in total. And um, they don't need to drill holes for it. It's pretty impressive. So they can be folded up, detached from the roof, and lifted by a crane onto a truck, ready for installation on the other side. So SolPod is like tinned up with ERM power. And this $5 million project that they're doing, the already got like 25, uh, 25 projects across like Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, and they've got already 2.5 megawatts installed. So there's like a 100 kilowatt system at several sites like the Norton Plaza, Marley Spoon Warehouse, Parkmore Shopping Centre, and High Point Shopping Centre. Wait, what? High, High Point, that's near me. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 cool. Now, if anybody actually works at High Point or knows someone at Soulpod, can you message me down below? It'd be great to do a story on this because I'd like to see how you actually fix it down as long as it's not obviously proprietary information. So, um, but my only concern obviously with this project is um, that, that we generally live by the coast and you get high winds and coastal, coastal areas. So, um, I'm, I'm encouraged, I'm excited. But I'm also worried that those panels will lift up. So I'd really like to see this in person. All right, time for bites. This is where little bits of news are coming at you real quick and fast. Ready? So first up, Tesla uh, announced last week changes to the Model 3 lineup. Now, my online free calculator for Australian people out there uh, is already up to date. So if you want to go check it out and see how the prices have changed, feel free. Now, what Tesla has done is to remove a lot of models and you can now only get the standard base plus or will drive long range and the performance model. And importantly, all of them will now include as standard autopilot, which heck, di didn't I? I said that in one of my previous videos, didn't I? So now what Tesla has done is they've separated these and autopilot is essentially just assisted steering with cruise control to match the speed of the traffic. In terms of other car manufacturers, this is actually pretty standard and is something that I think Tesla should include as a base, not an actual additional option. Yeah, I did. Now, the same thing obviously costs a bit more, but how much? Well, basically it's either a thousand or two thousand dollars American, which works out from where the price was a few months ago, from fifty-five thousand dollars to now sixty-five thousand dollars. It's getting up there, right? But Thinking about it, the Kona EV Highlander is like $65,000 and a BMW Series 3 is $75,000. So it's kind of affordable and competitive, kind of, 
Maybe. All right, now, before I get into a little bit more of news bites, just be forewarned, the next few ones are gonna be about Tesla. So look, for those who don't really care about this, um, look down below, I'll put the time on the screen now, you can fast forward to there, so you can skip all this section, all right? Let's get into this. Now, right-hand drive Model 3s might be headed down under way sooner than expected. Now, there's been growing ev evidence like reservation holders will soon be able to configure um, and do, like on the interwebs. So, my first exhibit is gonna be this. Elon Musk tweet on the 30th of April, left-hand drive order page should be live within a few weeks. Delivery start hopefully June, July. Uh, did he say left-hand drive? No, oh, what, no, <laughs> right-hand drive, yeah. So, this came after Twitter user Sean Murphy asked Elon when UK customers would be getting any news. Now, my second exhibit is this. Superchargers with the, I think it's CCS charger, I think CCS, and they're starting to retrofit them to superchargers in the UK. Now, question, my Australian colleagues, will this happen in Australia? Is this what we're gonna see here as well? And if so, maybe we should all get out there, start looking at superchargers, and maybe there's been some cable changes there, and that priority sticker, very important. All right, stay tuned. Next, self-driving cars will be hitting the roads of California April 22nd. Tesla's invited investors to a special event on this day, which Elon has said will be the start of something big and free investors from the, tar the tyranny of having to drive their own car. For those who think that maybe self-driving cars are, well, some ways off, it seems that Elon is pretty confident. So on May 1, the full self-driving option on Tesla cars will increase substantially. Oh no, gosh, just, can you wait until I get my Model 3, please? That'd be really appreciated. Okay, that aside. So, they've long disclosed they've been working on their own hardware and CPUs and stuff like that to bring this to market. And um, they've long said there'll be like a simple swap out, pending regulatory approval, obviously. Now, impressive as this might be, I wonder how long it might be in Australia before our law make lawmakers will approve something like this. Like, we're seeing all those videos now on YouTube around advanced summons, but I've seen none for Australia. So, hmm, I'm, I'm encouraged and discouraged at all at the same time. It's, it's conflicting, it's conflicting. Finally, some non-Tesla news. The Herald Sun detailed on the 16th of April how Australia has seen almost $30 billion invested into clean energy in the past two years. That's, that's amazing, right? Especially as almost all of this investment has actually come from private capitalists. Like, really? Yeah. So I did a bit of digging around, and let me tell you, it wasn't actually hard to do. And since 2013, federal input, like federal government money, has totaled $1.2 billion. So that means that the federal government has only injected about 3% towards renewable projects. Or if I apply that to like last year, as in the Herald uh. Article Sum um, article, and average it out, that's like $160 million per year, which is actually pretty tiny. So I found this really interesting tool by ABC and it shows you actual um, costs attributed in the federal government budgets. Oh my gosh, that's really hard for me to say, but have a look at it, it's really interactive. You can actually um, compare year on year what they're spending on different things and it's fascinating. Go have a play with it. Kind of get into that political space. Let's do. Yes, promises, my favorite bit and some, some of my viewers' favorite bit about what our politicians are saying and doing in the, moving this country of ours to a cleaner, greener place where renewable technologies like EVs, PVs, batteries, just, just to name a few things, um, are getting a lot more interest. And well, this segment got a whole lot more relevant, didn't it? Got the federal election coming May 18, so dust off your barbecues, invite your friends over, and let's get some political, political shenanigans on. But before I do, just a few days ago on the abc.net, they published a really good summary of what voters are most interested in. And well, let me tell you, I'm really happy and encouraged because in the space of like three years, people have in general become more concerned about the environment. Yay! So this chart demonstrates how in 2016, top of most people's list was the economy. Then healthcare, education, and well, the environment's somewhere down the line. Whereas now, leading the way, most voters are stating that they actually want um, the environment to be first and foremost. Now, this is very good. And second, well, the economy is still second there, but 
I don't think they'll ever change, do you? No. So, poll results can be found through the link below, and at this time of writing this article, more than 100,000 people had responded, and well, today, it's at 462,000. So, you know why this is important, right? This is what our political parties actually pay attention to. So, if you've got 10 minutes, I encourage you to head on over there right now. Go on, I'll wait, just go do it now. I'll, I'll, I'll be here. And um, yeah, do, do it. Just do it. Yeah. Do it. All right. So in the last episode of Renewable News, I promised I would cover several weeks of like how each political party sees EVs in Australia's future. And well, despite some outdated papers which say otherwise, like from cradle to grave, electric cars are actually better for the environment as they're extremely efficient at converting the fuel in this case like electrons, to moving a car. How much? Well, depending on make and model, some are like as high as 90%. Additionally, EVs have a smaller CO2 footprint. Yes, even when they use coal as a fuel source. Maintenance costs are far less with only like one-fifth of moving parts compared to an internal combustion engine. And that for those fortunate enough to have solar PVs and batteries or maybe a wind turbine, they can fill up for free. So the benefits are many, and if we have to reduce our CO2 emissions from the cars and trucks and the like, from about 20% today to, dare I say it, 5%, we need to move to EVs really quickly. So a few weeks ago, Philip King from the Australian newspaper put together a really good summary of the factors at play in Australia and, well, just how far behind the rest of the world we are. Oh, I mean, check this out. Along the bottom, the current EV sales worldwide, and it moves into forecast territory. We have what I reckon is linear growth, which is, by the way, not how new technologies actually become mainstream. Rather, they actually grow exponentially, and that, that's like a swoosh line. So, case in point, this chart from EV volumes shows year-over-year -year growth at more granular level. See how from 2010 to 18, sales have increased by about 60%. And right there, that's a nice little Nike swoosh line. Or technically speaking, exponential growth. So seeing these two charts, you'll note that Australia is absent from them. And from my research, and depending on who you take your data from, that's because we only have about six to 7,000 EVs in Australia. So let's jump into the data and do some comparisons. First up, EV sales in Australia since 2011. From humble beginnings with just 49 sold to 1,352 in 2018. One thing that jumps out from this chart is this slump in sales. Now, let's do a linear trend line. Look, on, it looks like on the up and up, doesn't it? But you know, it's actually hiding demand. But let's now put an exponential curve on this. Notice how there's actually a dip. That's, that's definitely not like an exponential curve. No, no. Some would say this is actually more realistic. And, well, are we turning a corner? Let me put this into percentage terms showing year-on-year -year changes. Yikes, what's happening? Oh, such a big jump from 2011 to 2012 with 416% growth. And right there, that's where the first Gen Nissan Leaf was launched. An uptake, well, was great. But the following year, we're down 15% and then up and then down. And then, well, we're staying down. So what does this mean? It means that EV sales have actually stagnated since 2015. Remember in the background of this, like uh, Renault and Tesla, they've actually brought out EVs to Australia for some time now. And despite some really compelling cars, uptake has been very poor. I mean, how poor? Well, in 2018, 1,500,000 cars were sold in Australia. And that 1,352 from earlier only re represents like 0.3% of all cars sold. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked, Bob. Is, is it the lack of choice? Yep. Are they too expensive? Yep. Is a little to no political will? Well, you know it, and that's why we're doing promises. So let's compare our data to like America, where EVs mark, make up like 2.1% of sales, and they've almost had like since 2009, very generous uh, credit schemes and incentives for EV buyers. Using evvolumeschart.com, well, this is very interesting. In 2013, they sold almost 100,000 EVs, representing a 75% growth year over year. And then eventually it dropped. But wait, what's happening here? Massive exponential growth since 2016, jumping by 81%. 
And well, why? Because more affordable EVs are coming onto market, namely the Tesla Model 3 from 2017 onwards, especially 2018. Now in Australia, we're not going to see EV growth like this, let alone take over mainstream car makers of um, like everyday utes and stuff like that, because we lack these incentives. And well, I'm going to awkwardly segue now and probably embarrass myself as to say maybe how far we're going to be looking to getting EVs in Australia. All right, so I've taken the following consideration. You've got Hyundai, Nissan, Tesla. They're all bringing their affordable EVs to market now or very in the near future. And when I say affordable, unfortunately, I'm not talking like fifteen to thirty thousand dollar cars. No, they're actually fifty to seventy five thousand dollar cars. So, yikes. Then I'm going to use guesstimates that suggest, suggest like seven thousand of Australians hold a reservation hold um, on Model Three and maybe 80% of them will commit to actually buying, okay? Fingers crossed that actually happens. We've got also the Kona EVs, which have now started shipping, but if you look at Reddit and, well, even the press worldwide, there's a worldwide shortage of batteries, and um, it's gonna be really hard to guesstimate how many Kona EVs are gonna be delivered in Australia, but I'm gonna hesitate of the 20,000 pre-orders worldwide, that maybe a thousand in Australia are here, maybe? So let's say maybe 800 of them are actually going to be fulfilled. Maybe that would be the best case scenario. Okay, so to embarrass myself so we can all come back to this and have a big laugh at me, I'm going to say by the end of 2019, more than 8,500 EVs will be sold in Australia. Now that's going to be massive, like seven times what we currently are doing. But you know what's going to happen the year after? It's going to go back down again unless we see some political change in this space. So that said... Let's get into a bit of a summary of what's going on in Promises. So last week, or well last week, two weeks ago, I promised that I'd bring like each major, major political party's policies on EVs. And if you want to go see what the Greens was, click down here and see what they're up to. But today it's on the Liberal Party. And before I get any keyboard rage, know that next week I'll be doing Labour and maybe the week after that I'll do some other minor parties, okay? And Independence, why not? Definitely. Deal? Yes. Okay. Let's go. I'm sorry to say, this is pathetic. This isn't a policy. This is like political rhetoric and actually says nothing at all. No targets, no roadmap, no direction to consumers, nor business. And how are we as voters supposed to vote when there's essentially no information? The expression, you don't know what you don't know, has never been more true. Oh, gosh. Well, on that tragic note, I'll end here today, but before I go, a bit of a plug for the next few episodes in the coming weeks. I traveled to a country town where they've almost, well, they've hit 50% of the renewable um, generation of electricity when they're gonna be moving to 2022 with 100% renewable. Pretty impressive. And ev to go I'm gonna show you a e-scooter ride-sharing platform that's going to be launching soon in the Northern Territory. So check in for that. And hey, if you do nothing, consider subscribing. It's really appreciated. Help support the channel. Share this on your social. Leave me a comment below. I'd like to hear from you. Um, the more I hear, the better I can shape this channel and provide stories that are of interest to you. And look, if you do nothing, stay green.